Hello friends, welcome to welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, buckle up, get cozy. That's why we're in a cozy setting right now. It is currently July the 30th. And I know I'm not going to read any more books because tomorrow I have a birthday to celebrate. I've been busy the past like last few days of this month. I went to go to a concert, went to go travel to Dallas basically. I celebrated so many birthdays. <laughs> so many birthdays. Spent so much money on gifts. But yeah, anyways, let's talk about this month. I do have a good stack here actually of all the stuff I read this month alone. So yeah, let's get into it because this is quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot surprisingly comparing to how busy i was i will admit i was like in a slump literally towards the end of this month after reading tgcf volume four so i had to push through with mangas and audiobooks it's crazy to me and as always i'll leave the rating and of course too um always in order of which i finished them this month as well um local trick warnings on books because i know a lot of these have a lot of true warnings take care of yourselves love you all anyways the first book I finished this month in July, okay, double making sure, is TGCF3, aka Heaven Officials Blessing, um, volume 3. I have a whole reading vlog for this. It's already up. I already know it is. And I gave it 3.5 stars. If you want to see my in-depth of, like, spoilers and everything, it's in that vlog. But, um, one of the main reasons why it wasn't highly rated was because of something that's triggering in here I was not a fan of. A bunch of things actually were, like iffy to me like literally what do you mean and then two a good chunk of it was like the past which could have been its own book from two and three but you know it's fine and of course two as always characters and learning about this world and everything is always so fascinating to me i never get bored with this series it's very easy to read through Look up trigger warnings for MXTX's work in any Don May. It is not lighthearted. It is very heavily topic that can literally trigger you. So do look into it if you ever want to read it as well. As I mentioned before, take care of yourself, please. But yeah, I cried to this book as well too. So that's also why I gave it a 3.5 stars. Like that kind of raised it up for me as well too. Like I mentioned in the spoiler vlog, there were some things I liked about it, but a lot of it I didn't like. So it was like iffy so like a 3.5 stars is what i'm gonna go with better than nothing definitely my lowest rating from tgcf series so far i would say on the bracket but that's all i'm gonna say without spoiling it too much because like i mentioned you gotta go watch the reading vlog for it if you wanna know but it is very heavily spoiler filled so yeah i'm trying not to spoil too much but basically it's about shillian who's ascended descended ascended and like you know about his kingdom has been wiped out he's a god and a lot of the other gods in heaven literally make fun of him like they don't see him as a god he's literally like this scrap god and there's this ghost king who he meets in book one and from there on out it's just chaos like it's crazy that's all you need to know about tgcf i have like a whole thing i talked about before what tgcf is but i kind of forgot what it is like a little meme thing but yeah, basically the Ghost King literally pines after him for 300 years, basically, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, he's like a total simp for Shillian, our scrap god. <laughs> and Shillian, literally, how can you hate this god? How can you hate him? Like, he's done nothing wrong. I want to protect him at all costs. He's so baby girl coded. It's crazy. But yeah, that's how I felt about this book. As well, too, this is the annotations for TGCF. <laughs> I kind of went ham on it, as you can see. Your girl was going reading this next up i listened to the audiobook of dial a for aunties by jesse q sotano it's number one in the series i'm probably gonna only read slash listen to one because like i've heard the series eh, after book one and i gave book one four stars actually such a funny fast read i adore how jesse took on a murder wedding comedy book i was so intrigued with the audiobook and love how family is basically a main focus as well in this book other than just the romance which kind of happens with a lot of like you know romancy comedy books so like i was surprised when they took three things into this and made it into this so good to me i loved every moment of it it was just so fun to listen to next up i had listened to the audiobook because it finally came in of if only i had told her i don't know about this author but yeah it's very popular if he had been with me i've decided to go ahead and finish the series and that's it i don't have a copy of this book i gave it 3.5 stars i was unsure because like 
we get three point of views at least, which I liked. I just wish we got in um, Celie's point of view, going through the stuff that she's been and seen from book one. You know, if you know, you know, try not to spoil anything. And as well too with Finny as well, you know, obviously, and with Autumn too, seeing their relationship from another point of view would have been cool to see, but it's fine, it's fine. I also felt for Jake and Autumn dealing with the loss of Finny, who's so very dear to them, but I wasn't like, you know, in love with this book slash story, but it was still good of like, you know, of Autumn from the situation in book one going through this without Finny, because we all know that he, you know, we all know. We all know the famous book. So yeah. It's really not even a spoiler. It's like in the first chapter of this book. So don't come for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say without spoiling it too much. Next up, I gave it five stars. This author never disappoints. And it is Worst Sleeping Girls Lies, which is this author's newest release this year, I believe. Um, I'm not going to pronounce the author's name because I cannot. And I even have this sign from the author because that's literally where I bought it from a book signing thing that they had on and so i'm so glad i got to read it this year when it came out because you know what your girl had to give five stars because i love ace of spades so much with like the racism and like that darkish academia mystery thing and lgbtq in it it was so good to me i read it like fast it was so good from two different point of views so good but anyways i gave this one obviously five stars <laughs> i love the writing so much in this book the author always knows how to write such words that get you pulled into the story. I have to admit, the topics here were so hitting. I'm so glad, um, you know, this author discusses these topics and obviously get you feeling for it all because there's so much topics discussed in here about boarding schools, schools in general, and like community-wise and rich people, like eat the rich. I admit, after the 200 mark, I was obviously seeing stuff that was predictable, but nonetheless, I was still enjoying it and felt moved in the end. The justice at the end made me so happy. I felt so many emotions in this book, which obviously made it five stars. I was always hooked, never bored with this. Every time I picked it up, I kept getting sucked in, which is what I love about reading. Not only to escape, but to learn and feel. And as well, too, the words, the fonts for this book. Hold on, I don't want to spoil anything. Oh my god, I really don't want to spoil anything. Okay, I'll just open up the first book. Literally, look at the font. It's so tiny. So, that's what made me push off from reading it after I got in it. But I'm glad I read it this year. I probably could have waited until fall because of the mystery type of thing. And to like this party going on kind of gives me like fallish vibes. And of course to boarding school. But like I'm glad I read it sooner because oh my god this book is so freaking good and so spooky. And like I don't know it just kept me intrigued because um. <laughs> also too do you want to know something funny a fun fact? I spent an hour and 20 something minutes trying to decode this Morse code thing. That you find out later on eventually in the book what it says. <laughs> I was losing my mind. I made a TikTok over it and a reel on my Instagram because, like, what do you mean? <laughs> I literally committed myself. Chloe even saw me going through pain and trying to decode it. It was so funny while we were sprinting. But yeah, this book is so crazy. Of like, oh my god, I forgot our characters for a minute. Of is this Sade? I think it is Sade, our main character, and um her housemate or whatever. She like is like why is she kind of freaking out and then she goes missing and so Sade's trying to like there's like so much going on with this book y'all like there's different plots to it and stories and it's like all connected it's so crazy to me it's so good like I literally had no one to talk to about this so I was kind of losing it while reading it and I was like predicting things and like talking about it in servers and to Chloe and like to Zaylee because like I was like I have no one to talk to <laughs> someone else please read it so whenever y'all read it or anyone else on the internet reads it and wants to talk about it let me know because your girl will talk about it i have annotations i have freaking annotations in this baby i have so many thoughts next up i finished a manga fly me to the moon volume three it kind of needed something wholesome after like reading that book if only i had told her and then to like with tgcf you know but <laughs> kind of crazy i've already seen the anime for it so far um I believe the next volume will be where I'm caught up in the anime question mark. I don't know how it works in manga, but anyways, I get this four stars. So cute of I cannot say her name. Kasaka Tasuka. It's been a while since I listened to the anime, so I can, don't know the English pronunciation. But a girl meeting Nasa's parents because of them being married and needing their blessing and all because she literally says Nasa in book one, and so he plans to like find her because she 
takes her to the hospital or whatever and he never sees her and then later on he finds her gets married to her and this is where the story goes of them being married and everything and newlyweds and everything and discovering things together it's so wholesome i really recommend it it's adorable and of course too the english voice actor is my one of my favorite english voice actors i met him too zach aguilar ah so glad i met him i think last year I believe at the con anime con but yeah so good i love the series so far so wholesome i adore it so much and i love the covers too of our main girl so far from what i know of the covers so pretty next up i finished this will be a reading vlog coming to you soon okay i promise <laughs> it's actually kind of uploading right now on my youtube channel so it might upload after this video or maybe a little bit after when this video comes out. Who knows? Because as well, too, I need to do a book haul. But anyways, I give it five stars, which is Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation, a.k.a. MDZS. I, if you don't know, I believe I gave it five stars. I was debating between, like, a four or a five. But I was like, you know what? F it. Because Long Wen Ji and Wei was Shen. And then, like, my favorite part was Long Wen Ji. Oh, I don't want to spoil it. I really don't because I have a whole reading vlog. But, like, towards the end, kind of, of them together in that vlog, you'll see Long Wen Ji being who who that's all i have to say okay y'all not when she's me way with shen's kinsey and little apple is chloe we have like a little thing of our little chaos crew but yeah i read it with chloe buddy read it so go check out her vlog eventually when it comes out to you i'll probably link it in this description anyways um the mystery kept me captivated Along with the romance between the two kind of bickering, I know a lot of people don't like Wei Wuxian and find him annoying apparently in book one, but like I didn't mind it because like that's literally me too. Like basically I'd be talking so fast. This is how I am too chaotic like you. As well too, when I kept picking it up and again and again, I kept getting sucked into this world because I kept trying to put it down when me and Chloe were buddy reading it. And as well too, we took like a good while because we were reading TGCF together. And then eventually we came back to Mato Sushi, and it was like a hundred something pages in from the vlog. You'll know when it comes out to you what I mean. But yeah, it was kind of crazy that I remember some of it. I'm also glad MXTX didn't do a whole chunk of the story being backstory, like TGCF. Thank God. And instead did like a little bit chap, like a whole chapter, I believe, of one of a flashback, which I enjoyed so much. And as well too, the artwork is so different from TGCF. TGCF you have like a cutesy cartoony, which fits TGCF, I feel like. And then with MDCS, it's more like brush strokey and like very beautiful like hold on i want to i want to show y'all what i'm talking about because it's crazy like you this is the way we shine you'll figure it out when you read it but he gets like reincarnated back so yeah like look at how it is like very strokey and i like it a lot like very finished and put well together with detail i really like how the artworks are different from mxtx's works the artists they chose to do or like pick for these donways it's crazy to me, but yeah, anyways, um, that's all I'm gonna say about this. Be ready for the reading vlog when it comes out to you to see, like, my spoiler-filled review and reactions, but that's all I'm gonna say about this. Very chaotic, cannot wait to see where they go into fixing up this mystery thing that's happening. Um, putting together this body from, obviously, book one at the manor that Wei Wuxian is chaotically into right now, and Lan Wenji with Wei Wuxian dynamic duo. It's crazy. And as well too, here is my annotations for it. It's it's kind of hectic as well. A lot more than TGCF, I feel like, for volume one alone. Whew. Next up, I listened to the audiobook mainly of this and I gave it 4.25 stars. Which is last night at the Telegraph Club. I had a literally can't English right now. Um yeah, I gave 4.25 stars. All I have to say is thank god I don't live in this era and I know it's I believe it's fiction. But, like, learning about the world it was back then, you know, in America is kind of crazy to me. And, like, how people deal with, like, LGBTQ, you know, about two women falling in love with each other. And, of course, too, it's, like, in America in 1954, it's not a safe place for girls and everything, falling in love. And then, too, like, the Red Scare paranoia threatens everyone, including Chinese Americans like Lily, with deeper deportation looming over her father Lily and Kat risk everything for love and then two it's crazy how something happens in here that I'm not gonna spoil and then that ending like what do you mean like they went through so much like secrets and everything and like tiptoeing around it's crazy and friendships that are happening and you know it's just crazy it was wow <laughs> wow you know so glad I wasn't born during this type of era 
the reading vlog, future reading vlog coming to you soon as well, part <laughs> two. Heaven Officials Blessing, aka TGCF Volume 4. <laughs> Look at this cover. Emily gifted this one to me a while back, so thank you, Emily. Here's the annotations before I get into my rant of this. I gave this one six stars. Um, I see why Emily rated it highly and a lot of other people in the server as well. I'm not gonna try to spoil anything, but like, I cried so many times. I think over five times. It was a roller coaster. I'm not ready for book six. I I know, I know y'all. I'm, I'm not gonna be ready for it. I'm scared. Um, so many emotions like W2F MXTX. How dare you make me go through this? I just know this is just a start to something more. I felt my heart ache, which, which hasn't happened in a while since the Poppy War series. Like, this broke me. <laughs> it's crazy. I just hate how Shillian. I just can't hate Shillian and I can't believe they don't respect him. Like, our cinnamon mom, what do you mean? And as well, too, for Windmaster. Beef Leaf. That's what I have to say. As well, too, a new character unlock. I adore, like, Windmaster slash new bestie. We love to welcome you, um, Yizin. Quan Yizin, I believe is how you pronounce his name. I don't know. And as well, too, lastly, Ling Wen. That's all I'm going to say without spoiling it. So good. Six stars. Um, the series is crazy. I admit to as well. As well too. I almost forgot the coffin scene. Anyways, that's it about this little rant. <laughs> the Lulu is the lulu -ing. I'm sorry if this is like a long video. We're almost done. I promise, besties. Next up. Okay, I finished this one first. What? Okay, I guess. Um, I listened to this on audiobook because I had this on my show for a while and I'm probably going to donate it. But it's Ink Blood to subscribe. I don't know if I want to continue the rest of the series. I gave it like a 3.25 stars. I feel like the pacing is what made this so low. I was also listening to it on audiobook and had it at max speed. But oh man, it felt so long still and a lot of flashbacks happening and like telling wise and stuff. I wasn't very into it. Oh, lastly, it gets interesting towards the end which which was a letdown for me. I do admit the concept was what made it higher as well. Like I like the concept of like these books and magic and everything and like this little sister thing and like it's crazy. Like I don't know how to spoil it. I don't remember too much about it. Like it was a blur. That's how you know it wasn't like highly rated. Like I feel like I wasn't in the right mind space for it after reading TGCF and MDCS this month. Like I feel like it was just like a filler, a blur, a moment, and it was gone to me, you know? It, it didn't keep me too intrigued, but I do like the concept, and I feel like some other people would enjoy it, but I wasn't one that didn't enjoy it as much, because like, I feel like I was hungover, <laughs> I admit, from reading those books, but yeah, it was okay to me, it wasn't a favor or anything. I don't think I'll continue the rest of the series, if it's a series or a duology, it's fine. I'm gonna, you know, donate it. Next up, I finally read Norigami Volume 6. Finally, after having it on my shelf for so long. I gave it 5 stars. <laughs> Backstory of the characters got me. It made me ache. That was my review because what do you mean? And as well too, I'm so glad as well. Freak, I forgot his name. The kid. Oh my god, I forgot the kid's name. Yukini? Yukine? I haven't watched the anime so I don't know the English pronunciation of y-u-k-i-n-e so yeah of him if you know you know but yeah definitely wow getting stung like that and uh, that's all i'm gonna say before i get emotional <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say next up um i know there's some backlash right now with holly jackson but um i read it anyways and i know what's like the details of like one of the actors in the a Good Girl's Guide to Murder show, Israel, I believe. And um, Holly Jackson hasn't said anything about it. But I, you know, I guess until now, you know, she says something. It, I, I don't know. Because, you know, sometimes authors don't get, you know, as much privilege as choosing their actors they want to pick and stuff. And too hard to, like, the writing script and everything. Like, Holly Jackson had a fight to get Sarge into the freaking show. And imagine we didn't get Sarge imagine so yeah holly had a freaking backlash them a lot for that so like i don't know if she had any choice picking the authors i mean any choice picking the actors but anyways i mainly listened to the reappearance of rachel price i gave this 4.5 stars um because there was a mention of two companies that are under boycott that i don't want to mention and i was like ah okay thanks 
Thanks for that. Just so be aware to too. Hi, editing stuff here. Um, I forgot to mention like what it is. Basically, Rachel Price um has gone missing for like a few years or whatever, and so they're doing it. These reporters or camera people are go coming to do like a documentary and everything and how the family is and stuff. And like, it's been like a whole mystery of where Rachel Price went. And so you kind of follow like, you know, that aspect. And then literally Rachel Price shows up and like out of the blue after years. And so now we're seeing like secrets and everything unfold and like what really happened and what went down. That's literally the position of it. Um without spoiling too much but anyways other than that holly outdid herself i was pointing fingers around and making theories so fast it was funny but damn bill's family are literally liars it's crazy to me i feel like this is that's all i'm gonna say because i don't want to like say anything else without spoiling it but i do want to admit ash and bell's chemistry i loved it and then too the can the bestie if you know you know at the end but that's all i'm gonna say um yeah, Bill's family is crazy. As well, too, some of the things kind of became obvious later on in the book. I was like, that does make sense. And I see why now that that was foreshadowing this and things. Like, I have made so many guesses throughout this book. Me and Chloe were basically buddy reading it. And yeah, me and Chloe were both like a little bit ached out by two of the company things. But like, we were very on our toes. Five Survive was a blur. We don't acknowledge her. At least this was better. And then I survive at least, thank god. So Holly's still doing it. Um it's never gonna be a good girl's guide to murder series, I feel like, because that was just so good. But yeah, anyways, that's how I felt about this book. Thankfully, this is the last thing I read this month. I gave it 4.5 stars. It's Love and Focus. Finally finished this freaking manga series. It's a very wholesome manga. It's very short, it's just three volumes. Doesn't have too much excitement, I feel like. I feel like it could have been dragged out a little bit more, at least for like another two more volumes like keep it five volumes max this was such a fast ending i feel like too that's why i wish it was longer but that's fine you know i still enjoyed it nonetheless a little bit at the end it got a little bit cute because i was like you know what that would have been fun to explore and then too the relationship if you know you know of like one of the characters getting over her and the other one of her and him together that's all i'm gonna say because i'm not gonna say who she ends up with and to the life of like school and everything and how they're gonna go through this and like if he's gonna the guy that she chose is gonna go through on this path of like you know something if you know you know if you read this but yeah that's how i felt about this volume i just wish there was more to this series i really do i really like this author's um art style as well too because i read the wolf boy is mine <laughs> that's a cute series i will admit i like that series it was really cute and this one was very wholesome with like a camera interest as well too photography but yeah anyways friends that is it sorry for this very long video of this wrap up i hope you all enjoyed it because i do yap a lot but yeah be on the lookout for the future reading vlogs as well too um i hope you all have a good day good night morning whatever time it is for you when this video reaches you and until next time I will see you very soon, actually. Bye!